50 miles north of downtown Detroit. Not a seat to be had in the palace of Auburn Hills. The Nets and Jason Kidd have had three long days of waiting and stewing after a bad performance. How will they solve Big Ben, who's punching in? It's time to go to work. It's game time, playoff time in the palace. They met in the 2003 Eastern Conference Finals, and it was a one-sided sweep. There was no question who had the other's number then. But a new year and a new look Piston team could be changing this tale. Everywhere you look in game one, there was a Wallace waiting. Detroit's defense was dominant. New Jersey scored only 56 points, one of the worst playoff outputs ever. We gave ourselves a chance defensively, offensively. We just didn't, we didn't give ourselves a chance. So um, if that's going to be the case, then we could be in for a long series. It's his second year, but again, he's a playoff presence. Tayshaun Prince is the Pistons' offensive catalyst. Tonight, will his team go up 2-0, or can the Nets look like the two-time Eastern champs? Game two is next. For the 24th consecutive time, the Palace is sold out and rocking for game two of the Eastern Conference semifinals. As we take a look at the McDonald Eastern Conference bracket, you see Detroit, they're in the second group, a 1-0 series lead as they play game two tonight and game three on Sunday. We welcome you courtside along with George Carl and Tom Tolbert. This is Mike Tirico. We'll be joined by Ms. Monday Night, Michelle Tafoya, coming up here in a little bit. Well, plain and simple, it was gross. It was awful to watch the Nets 56 points, second fewest points in the shot clock era in a playoff game. Tom, they've got to get better yeah. as a group, and one individual might be the key to that. Yeah, well, first off, you look good tonight, by the way. Yeah, I, I think you look really touch. nice. <laughs> Just talk. <laughs> Kenyon Martin's going to have to be big tonight. Now, he averaged 23 points a game against New York. I know this isn't New York, but four points below his season average of 16 and a half points, that's what he scores against the Pistons. He's the one guy on the inside that can do some damage. He's an all-star. If they're going to win this series in advance, he's going to have to play like one. Coach, Detroit was great on defense. Their offense wasn't terrific 19 turnovers only 78 points but there's one guy in talking to Larry Brown the last few days that he's in love with I think a guy that's marvel marvelous performance is here's a guy that is a rookie played 400 minutes and was a star in the playoffs Deshaun Prince he's come into this playoff series and he's moved himself up a level where most players go down the level here's a guy that's played better than Carmelo Anthony in the in the playoffs he can play outside he can play inside he can finish on the break he makes defensive plays he's become a foundation to a very good basketball team a very good young player making a mark in his playoffs Prince one of the men up front as we check the Bud Light starting lineup same 10 that started game one back on Monday night Richard Jefferson Kenyon Martin Jason Collins got an early foul trouble as a complete non-factor Prince is joined by Rasheed Wallace and Ben Wallace up front in the backcourt it is Jason Kitten his 10th year out of Cal says the knee feels fine and Kerry Kittles who was one of the next to get hot early on Chauncey Billups and Rip Hamilton on the other side for Detroit. Hamilton had 15 points, six rebounds, and seven assists in game one. Danny Crawford, 21-year veteran, NBA official, joined by Joe DeRosa and David Jones, the men who will officiate the game tonight. It's been almost 96 hours of waiting and stewing and hearing how bad they were in game one. Let's see how the Nets do in game two on offense. The Pistons in white get the ball first. The one thing to look forward to or I don't even know if you should look forward to it that could happen in this game that happened last game Detroit ran the shot clock down to under 10 seconds 25 times and Wallace outside jumper off the mark rebound Jason Collins as a matter of fact, Tom, they had three yeah. shot clock violations three in that shots, first quarter. And then they also had about 12 or 13 times where they ran it under five. They want to keep the tempo slow. Now, Detroit can run when they want to, but and you see an offensive foul right there on Kenyon Martin. Right away. Let's visit with Michelle Tafoya. Michelle. All right, well, I asked Lawrence Frank how uh, Richard Jefferson responded after that one for 12 shooting performance on Monday, and he chuckled and said, you never have to worry about Richard Jefferson's confidence. And Jefferson, in fact, said, I'd love to get the those same looks again tonight that I got in game one. Rip Hamilton would love to get those on my mic. But in fact, Richard Jefferson, a one for 12 night is an anomaly, Mike. He did, after all, shoot 49.8% from the field in the regular season. One of the top dozen in the NBA, Michelle. Richard Hamilton hit the hoop to give the Pistons 
their first point to the night. Nets tried to go to Martin the first time. It was an offensive foul. Second time, he had no chance getting it out over Rasheed Wallace. There is such a length advantage for the Pistons. The Nets' interior presence has not been there yet in this series. That's a carry on Billups. Turnover on Detroit. I mean, we can talk about statistics, matchups. What I'm looking for in the first five to ten minutes of this game is how aggressive New Jersey can play. They have to be the aggressive basketball team somehow, some way. They were an energy team, a defensive team that didn't play with energy and weren't the best defensive team on the court the last game. Jason Collins, early foul trouble. Jason Kidd, his three off the mark, rebound by Ben Wallace. And the gong, like Big Ben in London, clangs here at the Palace every time Wallace gets a basket or a block or a steal or a rebound. Rashid over Collins. And Jefferson comes away with the board. Hope they, hope they have insurance on these rims. <laughs> they got to work out in game one. Fortunately, the rims also had three days to rest. <laughs> Tayshawn Prince was lit up by Richard Jefferson in the regular season. Jefferson, as Michelle mentioned, one of 12 in game one. Threw it to Martin, who tried to throw it down. He's begging for a foul, not getting one. And here come the Pistons, three on two. Phillips, the take. You can see what the Nets are trying to do, guys. They're trying to force it inside. And they're trying to get the Pistons somehow in foul trouble early on. I think they're going to be penetrating the ball. They might not post up, but they will play through the paint with their penetration. Again to Martin. Third catch there. Slapped away by Wallace. Six to shoot for Jersey. Now, it's nice to be aggressive. And it's nice to take it to the rim. But you can't take it to the rim at the expense of passing up good shots. You can't try to take a 16-footer away just so you can get to the rim. Jason Kidd 0 for 2 from 3. 0 for 5 for the Nets in the first 240. I haven't seen a good shot from, from New Jersey yet. Chauncey Billups jump pass to Rasheed Wallace. Three minutes gone by. Nets 0 for 5 from the field. Richard Jefferson tries to take it in his own hands. Lost it. Kittles will get the jumper. And the first points of the night for New Jersey. They might defend seven feet in better than any team in the NBA, the Pistons. And when you get in there, they got length and Rashid and Tayshawn Prince. And they also got the, probably the most active center in the game as far as blocking shots of Ben Wallace. Both Wallaces are such good help defenders, too. They've made each other even better inside. Eight to shoot, Tayshawn Prince on Jefferson. They've gone against each other since high schoolers on the West Coast. And Prince will take. Good defense by Jefferson. You know, the Nets want you to know, too, they play good defense yeah. as well. Kittles diving to the goal. Jason Collins got the rebound. So when Ben Wallace went in the air for the block, it left Collins on guard. And for Jason, that's his first field goal of the series. I almost feel like cracking open the bubbly anytime somebody scores. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very low scoring game. 14, 11, 14, and 17. The score by quarter for New Jersey in game one. And I don't want to bring up the tendency of playoff games. The score goes down as yeah. the series goes on. Hamilton the miss. Rasheed Wallace couldn't snatch it. And Kenyon Martin brings the Nets back the other way. Here they are on the run. Jefferson is stopped. And an offensive foul is called on Jefferson. Every time Jersey tries to break, there's a white shirt back. Deshaun does a great job of just getting position. I think Jeff Jefferson and New Jersey are aggressive trying to get to the rim. And they might take a few charges to do it. And that was a good call by the referee. 33-year-old Lawrence Frank, the head coach of the Nets, who after game one, Jersey flew home. Frank went right from the airport at Newark to the office and pulled an all-nighter as his team came in to watch film on Tuesday morning. Out of bounds, seven to shoot for the Pistons. You know, Mike, that game one, too, the Nets' highest scoring quarter was lower than the Pistons' lowest scoring quarter. 18 was the Pistons' lowest scoring quarter. You see right there, I mean, those numbers are just enough to make you vomit. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, I really know where to put it, is there? Nice strip by Kittles. Here come the Nets on the break. Kenyon Martin. That is, that is one thing New Jersey did do well yeah. in, in game one. They created some transition with turnovers. Detroit had 19 turnovers. Larry was very concerned about that in, in their offense. They think they can play better offensively than they did in game one. From 6-0 to 6-6. Detroit the first six. 
The Nets respond with a half dozen. Ben Wallace out to bump kid. Chauncey Phillips has to shoot over Collins. Hamilton gets the rebound, and the Pistons will wait for a good one. They'll get it with a Wallace three. Rasheed Wallace, who is now 7 of 22 from behind the line in these NBA playoffs. Interesting the fact that for the last five years we talked about the West being the best because they're the biggest. Yep. Look at the two best teams in the Eastern Conference, the imported Western Conference big men. Jermaine O'Neal and Rasheed Wallace. Both on the same team in Portland for four years for Jermaine out there. Well, there's Kenyon Martin. He's touched it a lot in the half court. That dive to the goal cuts the deficit to one. I think Kenyon Martin is, is playing against a lot of size in this series that he knows he plays them with against Western Conference team, but doesn't play that often against an Eastern Conference. And it's bothering him a little bit. He's going to have to make an adjustment to feel to get maybe go into the rim a little bit more. Rasheed for back-to-back -back threes. Kid gets the rebound. Nets must feel like they've been able to run more in this first quarter than they did in all of game one. They've had a couple of breaks, but the Pistons back to slow that one down. Collins, third year man out of Stanford, missed it. And Rasheed Wallace gets the board. This game two, game one was Monday, game three, Sunday in New Jersey. Jefferson there as Hamilton cut, and they call it on Richard, much to the dismay of the Nets bench. They didn't like the call, which is the second personal foul on Richard Jefferson. Big call there. Well, the Nets have had some freedom to get out on the break. Some easy points. There were no easy points in game one. Kenyon Martin with a couple of field goals. Nice defensive start. It's going to be like that all series long. You're watching the NBA Playoffs on ESPN. Early going here in Auburn Hills. Pistons by one, and let's check in again with Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, the Nets have opened this game 4 of 13 from the field, but nobody expects them to shoot as poorly as they did in game one. But Jason Kidd gave me some insight as to why that may have happened. He said shooters like Richard Jefferson start the night by sinking their first shot, and they think everything's going to go great. He said then they miss a few in a row, and they start to try to guide the ball. He said it's like using a remote control or trying to control a kite in in the sky and he said once you pull out that remote control and try to guide the ball too much it's out of hand he said the solution is when you have an open shot mike just let it fly oh george and tom you watched the game a couple of times over how much of the 19 of 70 shooting for the nets would you say was the pistons defense and how much would you say might have been a contribution of the nets rust a week off since the sweep of the Nets? well i, I think I would say 90% Pistons defense because even though they had open shots, when a team plays defense like Detroit, you're always expecting them to come at you. So you want to get that shot off a little bit quicker than maybe you have to. So it's always in your head, whether they're in your face or not, you're thinking about them. I think Detroit's intangibles of the, in the, going into this series are all on the Detroit side. You have them swept last year. They got a home court. They go 20 and four the last 24 games of the season. The Rasheed Wallace trade has got them juiced and thinking positive. And I think it, it was just a situation that New Jersey came in and hit a buzzsaw, and now they just got to adjust to it. Hamilton knocks down both free throws. Once again, the foul before the timeout was on Richard Jefferson, his second, but he remains in the game. Pistons on top by three here in game two. And I think a key stat tonight is going to be field goal attempts. New Jersey needs to get their field goal attempts up near 80. Last game it was 70. They need more field goal attempts than Detroit. Deflection by Ben Wallace. They had 19 deflections in the first half in game one. Rip a two. Ben Wallace is maybe the best in basketball creating defensive plays with his hands. We talk about shot blocking, but he gets a lot of deflections in the game which turned into offensive plays. Coaches are always charting deflections. George is 19 and a half, a high number. 19 is extremely high. He had 32 for the game, but anytime you get over 15 and a half, you're doing a great job. They try to go post up there with Jason Kidd using one of the few size advantages that the Nets have, and Chauncey Billups picked up his first personal foul. Well, it's not surprising Ben Wallace gets those deflections because that's the same reason he gets those blocked shots. He has great anticipation and awareness of not only where the ball is, but where it's going. 10 to shoot for New Jersey. Jefferson with the two personals. Got a nice screen from Kidd on the way down. And the foul was called on Ben Wallace. First on Ben, second on Detroit. 
As Richard Jefferson comes to the line, Larry Bird, Celtics for Bill Russell's. Which team was best? Why don't you log on to NBA.com? Cast your votes in the first round matchups of the all-time finals challenge only on NBA.com. Do you get an answer here, guys? Or? Okay. How do I know? I was like two years old when <laughs> Russell's winning championships. <laughs> Come on. Right. I'll take Showtime Lakers over anybody. Well, we'll get to that as the matchups move on. As you log on, you see the numbers for Jefferson. He uh, has improved in his each of his first three seasons in the NBA. Really has become a fringe all-star performer at the back end of this season. 13-10. Neither team has made a substitution. Hamilton is hot. So he hit the two free throws, then two field goals in a row. I think Hamilton is one of the best guards in the league and moving without the basketball. He uses screens, they do a lot of wheel actions with him, and he just gets hungry. When his number gets called, he's really good. Eight thus far for Hamilton. Richard Jefferson tries to respond, and he does. One adjustment they're making is giving kids some touches on the low yeah. block that they didn't do in, in game one. They're going to give him, I bet you he's going to get five, maybe six and a half, and that's going to be a big adjustment for New Jersey. Rasheed Wallace, a two. And Kenyon Martin on the board. Nets doing a much better rebounding job here tonight. They're out rebounding the Pistons by four in the early going. They were out rebounded by 19 in game one. Jason Kidd's outside shot, not even close. 0 of 3 from outside. The Nets are saying he's healthy. I don't think he's healthy. I don't. The way I see him playing, I don't I think he's really bothered by his knee. He's not hundred percent. And I think it's a factor in his, his performance. Jason Collins crashed the glass but couldn't come away with the rebound. Pistons with a little hop in their step. A third three of the night for Wallace. He's missed two of them, made one, and no fast break opportunities. The Pistons are back, and it's a uh, Richard Hamilton foul out at midcourt. I think Larry Brown talked a lot about the three-point shot coming early in a shot clock really caters to New Jersey. That's that's the long rebound, the bounce out rebound that can turn into a fast break, that can turn into some rhythm and some momentum for New Jersey. And I think Larry's gonna probably have a little talk with Rashid in those last couple shot selections. Rodney Rogers just came in for the Nets. Richard Jefferson is two fouls to the bench. Jefferson one of three from the field after the one of 12 in game one and Rogers right into the game with a turnaround jumper. That's twice kid is entered to the elbow and then set a pick. Normally you don't have a point guard setting a pick but he's setting a pick on the guy and allowing last time Richard Jefferson this time Rodney Rogers to take one dribble curl and an uncontested jump shot. Kind of a simple weave action. Yeah. Take the shoot. Tayshawn Prince. Guarded by Kenyon Martin, feels he could take advantage inside. Pick to Phillips for three. That's a three-pointer that comes late in the shot clock that I think Larry likes and, and really likes the shots to knock it down. But remember, if you go back to Larry's Philadelphia teams, uh, they really disdain the three-pointer. Kenyon Martin from the outside knocks it down. Was it the uh, first game of the year with Randy Ayers as the coach that the Sixers took more threes than at any point in Larry Brown's five years as the Sixers coach? Well, you got to give Coach Brown credit. He, is, he knows that this team does shoot the three, and he allows them to shoot maybe a little bit more than he wants to, but it is the strength of the Pistons. Hamilton trying to do that on his own. That's picked by Martin. And the shot clock will reset to 14 after this timeout. Chauncey Billups, five points, five assists. His Pistons on top by two. Back here in Detroit, so many of the uh, former Pistons live in the area and are around. Rick Mahorn, part of the uh, radio broadcast tonight. The Hall of Famer, Bob Lanier, in the house as well, part of the NBA's Read to Achieve program. He was in Detroit earlier today. And the great Dave Bing in the Pistons' early days when they played downtown at Kobo. Before the move up here to the palace, what college did he go to? Uh, Dave would be uh, one of the great Syracuse archmen <laughs> of all time. Actually, the best of all time. He was backcourt partners with Jim Behar. Uh, Don't open that door up for you. Thank you, Coach. Very nice to see you and Tom in Carolina blue tonight. Some of the jerseys that hang from the rafters here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. 18-16. Pistons lead by two. Corliss Williamson has come in to join the Detroit lineup, and so has. Mike James, who came over in the Rashid Wallace three-team trade. The Nets brought Lucius Harris in at the last whistle. Has a six to shoot for the Pistons. 
Rip Hamilton has it blocked by Kittles. So a good job defensively by the Nets. I think their defense has been better here in the first quarter, guys. Yeah, well, that time, you know, you get them under five seconds in the shot clock, and you realize that they have to shoot. So you can take a chance and maybe jump before the offensive player even jumps because you know he has to let it go. Benny Martin going back at Rasheed Wallace, and as he was fumbling the ball, Wallace has called for a foul. That's where you always have to be careful with Rasheed and how much the officials will take of his uh, conversation. Conversation? <laughs> First foul in the last two minutes, game two of his best of seven Eastern Conference final, a semifinal, with Detroit leading 18 to 16. Of course, so much focus on the Nets offense and very tough on them guys, having so much time off, shooting 19 of 70 in game one, hearing questions for the last three days about it. Well, they're not gonna shoot a high percentage in this series, but can they get a, enough field goal attempts to compensate for that? That foul was on Lindsey Hunter. The last foul, of the Rashid Wallace did the uh, most protesting, the last foul was credited to Richard Hamilton, and that's his second foul. They have Richard Hamilton for Detroit and Richard Jefferson for New Jersey, each with two personal. Let's be honest, playing poorly and being in the New York media market has to be a miserable experience. I mean, the, the play is set history, 56 points, second worst scoring performance, and then having the New York media have to talk about it for three days I think it's guy gets gold for everybody. One of two for Kittles. And the Pistons maintain their one-point lead. So Mike James, Lindsey Hunter in the backcourt. Certainly Detroit has less offense, but these guys have been a very good defensive presence, especially in game one. Corliss Williamson, who's been slowed by a knee problem, forced to take it. Well, it is the Nets doing the good job in the half court. Detroit has not gotten very many good looks here in the first quarter. Well, you mentioned earlier, Mike, I mean, we talked about the Nets and their running game, but they've been a solid defensive team, and that's maybe the main reason they've gone to two straight finals is they do play great defense. Kenyon Martin rims it out, and Rasheed has played the whole quarter despite his sore foot gets the rebound. Really, the personality of these two teams are a little bit of mirroring of one another. They're both good defensive teams. They're very physical. They, they, they don't have great superstars, but they have great players all at every position. It's a double dribble on Ben Wallace. He wants to call from the outside that it was touched, but it was not. Michelle. Well, Mike James, as you mentioned, in the game for the first time. And coming into the game, Larry Brown had just drawn up a few plays. And he looked at Mike James and said, Mike, you all right? Mike, Mike, you all right? They smiled at each other, gave each other a little fist bump. And then he just reminded him, hey, just remember to get back every time, Mike. <laughs> Mike James has started 55 games in Boston this year and the three-way trade with Rasheed Wallace involving Atlanta, Portland, and Boston. And it was kind of underreported in it, but Mike James is a very important player for the Pistons as they bring he and Lindsey Hunter off the bench. I think it's kind of unique that most, most coaches like to bring offense off their bench, and Larry Brown brings a defensive unit off their bench. Now they got Darvin Ham probably for the last possession. And Eldon Campbell as Jason Kidd works it inside. Nice feed for Kenyon Martin, who's been good in the quarter, guys. Four of nine from the field. He has eight points. Kidd five assists. Pistons trying to get a last shot off. Lucius Harris gave the foul out here at midcourt. But it'll work out okay for New Jersey as they had a foul to give here in the last two minutes. And as you mentioned, Coach, the offense defense returns here yeah. as the two starting guards come in with Tayshawn Prince for this final possession. In a regular season game, Larry Brown probably would not do this, yeah. but in a playoff game, every possession, even in the first quarter, is very valuable, and he's going to take a chance of maybe falling into a, a good three or an easy offensive possession in two seconds. Three guys who can hit the three as well as anybody in this team, Prince, Phillips, and Hamilton, came in. Intercepted by Jason Kidd, and that will end the first quarter. So the New Jersey Nets don't get to 20 for the fifth consecutive quarter, but they do get the lead. After one, Nets 19, Pistons 18. A lot of talk over the last four days about Detroit controlling the series. New Jersey not finding its way. But early on, the Nets know they're going to be here for a while in game two. You're watching the day after tomorrow's presentation of ESPN's Play Like There's No Tomorrow. Commissioner David Stern among the 22,000-plus on hand here at the Palace. Game two 
of the Eastern Conference semifinal. Detroit won game one. New Jersey the one-point lead here in game two. Tom Tolbert, what have you noticed in the first quarter? Well, the Nets wanted to attack and be aggressive, and so far they've gotten to the paint. Certainly, Kenyon Martin has gotten to the paint. You see him right there. And the one thing about Kenyon Martin, in the four previous games he's played against the Pistons, he's averaged 12 field goal attempts per game. Right now in the first quarter, nine field goal attempts. Mm. The mindset is aggressive. Give me the ball. I'm going to make something happen. I'm an all-star. Half of New Jersey's eight field goals came from the paint in the first quarter. Kerry Kittles rattled out a three, but Martin right back on the glass. This thing, Mike, we could talk about Detroit, how they're tough to score against, and they got a great front line. But if you're an all-star, you make adjustments and you get productivity. You didn't matter who you're playing against, you get the job done. Lucius Harris with the hoop. Nets have seven offensive rebounds and lead by three. Lindsey Hunter try to go inside. Kittles has the size there. Corliss Williamson from the outside. Ben Wallace ingests that rebound, not to the deck, but keeps the possession alive. Eldon Campbell on Aaron Williams, and they call offensive foul on the 14-year veteran out of Clemson. I don't care what the numbers say right now. I'm if I'm New Jersey's coach right now, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I got my team back. I got my passion back. I got an angry team. I got a team that's showing their character, their heart a little bit. I mean, there's still a lot of strategy going in the next three quarters, but he's got his team that he's coached for the most of the season back playing the way they like to play. Mebido Kour in for Detroit. Next break the press. Oh. Kenyon Martin attacks the rim again. Well, no Ben Wallace, no Rasheed Wallace. It's time to take it in there and make a pay. With Eldon Campbell and Okor as the interior presence for Detroit. Next lead by five. Easy Hunter try to take Kittles. Can't get the runner inside. Good job by Kittles to tap it out. But Eldon Campbell went over the top to keep it alive. And Williamson finishes. The Pistons have five reserves in. The Nets have starters Kenyon Martin and Gary Kittles in the game. Well, if you lose Corliss Williamson on the offensive end, just look in the general vicinity of the left block. Out of bounds off Rodney Rogers. Detroit ball. And it's a great job by Lucius Harris pushing the ball. Kenyon Martin catches, and once he has some momentum, there's not a lot of people in the game that can stop that. Look at the Nets, uh, points in the paint, five field goals in the first 14 minutes, eight field goals, all of game one. Never no cool. It is uh, second year. He came alive in the playoffs last year, much like Tayshawn Prince. Two to shoot. Hunter got fouled, and then shoots some free throws. Aaron Williams picks up his first. And it'll bring Lindsey Hunter to the line. He was a uh, top 10 draft pick back in 1993 by these Detroit Pistons. Hard to believe it's been 11 years since Lindsey came in the league. Seven years with Detroit, a year over there in Milwaukee in 2001. Had, he had a great year for us in Milwaukee. And what he does is he's kind of like a one-man defensive press. He picks up the ball. He's a kind of, his, ex, his expertise is covering the ball, defending the ball, pressuring the ball. And Larry Brown believes that's a big part of their personality off their bench. Came from his uh, college and early days, the role of a scorer. Hunter has a championship ring. He was part of the Lakers team after your year in Milwaukee with him in 2001, George. In 02 in L.A. Tend to shoot. Defensive switch on Kidd, but he finds Jefferson who missed. That's out of bounds off the net. New Jersey has five offensive rebounds. They're much more active and more aggressive, not only to take and penetrating the ball to the rim, but going to the board on all shots. Well, I think with this offensive unit out there for the Pistons, a lot of it could fall on James and Hunter to be able to create for other people. They're, they don't have guys right now that are just going to go ahead and take you with Wallace on the bench, Hamilton on the bench. Odin Campbell to Lindsey Hunter. And Rodney Rogers on the glass. Look at Richard Jefferson sprinting. Oh, he nice. got him to Williams. That was all made by the speed of Richard Jefferson sensing a break. And Jason Kidd passed it. You know, I think Jason Kidd may be the fastest player with the ball ever to play the game. He, he may be faster with the ball than without, if that's possible. But he just flies. 
Nine to shoot. Detroit struggling on the offensive end with this group out there. Campbell up and under. Mimino core the weak side rebound. The second year man from Turkey who was a second round pick in 2001 for the Pistons. Took a year overseas before he came to the U.S. After Detroit drafted him. Rodney Rogers has that range. Not this time. Hunter went around kid. Offensive foul is called as Rogers had the defensive position and was uh, outside of the restricted area to pick up the offensive foul on Hunter. Fast break 101. Long shot. Quick Storm. outlet. Quick outlet. Boop, boop, boop. Pass. Whoop. Gotcha. And see ya. Much different next team here in game two. They lead by two. ESPN's presentation of the NBA playoffs brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. Kevin Frazier in the Times Square studio with this Taco Bell update and to let you know what's going on tomorrow. Big day of basketball on ESPN. The party starts with Kia NBA shoot around at 6 Eastern. Then it's game two between the Heat and Pacers. Can the Heat bounce back? Followed by our nightcap, the Kings and Timberwolves at 930 Eastern. And you know what? Listen to Tom Tolbert talking about the fastest guy with the ball in the NBA. Does he forget about himself when he had that flock of seagulls Duran Duran haircut, Mike? <laughs> I don't think so. Thank Easy. you. Pistons down two. Here's Michelle. And Larry Brown in that last time out, Mike, said to his team, he went through all his X's and O's, and then he said, all of that means nothing unless we get loose balls, we get rebounds, and we get back. And the only way you get back is by taking good shots. He doesn't like their offensive rebounding so far, Mike. You can see a little more desperation out of the Nets here in game two thus far, Michelle. Fans wanted to travel on Jefferson. The crash of the glass by Rodney Rogers. That's as high as Rodney Rogers has been out in seven years. I think he got a little bit lift. I think he got a little <laughs> Oh, you're right. Rodney got up for that one. But it, it's been one, one side, attack the rim. Yep. They said they were going to do it. If you read between the lines with the Nets, it's exactly what they've done. Prince off the board. Rogers swapping it away. What a show for Rodney Rogers off the bench. Now in transition. A kickball by the Pistons. Reset the clock. Oh, not the 11th year man out of Wake Forest. Look at this. I mean, he flew. <laughs> and then on the defensive end. I'm still impressed by that offensive rebound. That was impressive. They got to get some energy and a good performance off their bench. Lucius Harris and Rodgers is two guys that they have to get. They don't have anybody else. They're not going to play anybody else. They only gave him 10 points in game one. Out of bounds with 13 to shoot for the Nets. And remember when Jason Kidd and Kenyon Martin were hurt, in the middle part of March, Harrison Rogers started, and they at least gained more offensive confidence and played pretty well. They oh. have two all stars. Oh, what a pass from Kidd and Aaron Williams with his second throwdown, largest lead of the series for the Nets. That was awesome. That was just an awesome pass. And a great dunk too. Yeah. Though. I mean, Aaron Williams has some spectacular dunks. Man, I don't know why this guy leads the league in assists. He knows where guys are going to be and lets him go get it. Rasheed Wallace spins and turns. Hunter got the rebound. Pistons reset. They're looking for offense. The Prince of the Palace. Tayshawn missed the three. Kid with the, Jefferson on the right. The ball movement so much more crisp for New Jersey tonight. Lucius Harris chases down his miss. Jefferson just one of four. After one of 12 from the field in game one, the step through, the find of Harris, and it is all hustle for New Jersey as they lead by eight, and the Pistons going to take time out here. The New Jersey Nets challenged after the futility of game one, responding with terrific effort here in game two. Jason Kidd looks the same. Aaron Williams getting up high. Rodney Rogers soaring over people. Harrison Rogers off the bench. Great start for New Jersey here tonight. ESPN's presentation of the NBA playoffs brought to you by Coors Light. Unleash the Rocky Mountain cold taste of Coors Light. 
here in America's Motor City. The motor that's running is the team from Jersey. Nets up eight, fast break clinic in that last state sequence. Well, most fast breaks have one thing in common, quick outlet pass. Look at Kidd when he catches it. He's on the fly, and then you got the wing runners, and the ball doesn't touch the ground. Three seconds it takes him to get down there, and then Aaron Williams finishes it off. When you watch New Jersey, and you look at right there, I was about to mention Sacramento, Memphis gets out and run. Same with Dallas. Why do they get out and run? They get the ball, and the point guard is moving the other way towards the opposite of the court when he catches it. He catches it, has the momentum, and then you get guys that can run with him. A little defensive trap on the sideline for the Nets. Out of that timeout, eight to shoot. Mehmet Okur has it on Aaron Williams. Okur was patient. Williams hung in there, and here come the Nets again. Two on one. Pig and Jefferson. And a foul is called as Richard couldn't convert. Chauncey Phillips picks up the foul, and that is his second. So both Detroit starting guards have two personal fouls. A lot of a lot, a lot of New Jersey's fast breaks are coming off of tough shots by Detroit. A lot of bad offense turns into good offense by the other team running up and down the court. Uh, the, the great break you saw was off of Lindsey Hunter three-pointer, which bounces out long. But that, that was a big, big part of it. But that was a bad shot that yeah. kicked out, and a two-on-one occurred at this end. We got to talk about the Nets bench. In game one, they scored 13 points. In game two, they already have 12 points. Mm. Jefferson back to the line. Unable to convert there, so it remains a nine-point edge. A 9-2 New Jersey run. Nets uh, led 9-5 in game one. That was their biggest lead. Another steal by Kidd. Jefferson left side. Oh, they are running them silly right now. Absolutely. Not just off turnovers, off missed shots. For some reason, the Pistons are not getting back on defense. Too many guys getting caught down near the baseline. And once Kidd gets out ahead of you, it's lights out. Jason has seven assists on the Nets. 15 field goals. Hamilton Okor, two-man game. Beautiful block by Williams and Jefferson. Oh, the Nets are flying tonight. And Kidd orchestrates. It's the Pistons that can't hit. Nine of 28 from the field. Lucius Harris couldn't get that one. Okor with the rebound. Detroit's front line starters only have five points. All from Rasheed Wallace. So Phillips takes it in his own hand and has a chance for a three-point play. He tried to get outside the circle on that one and just couldn't get out. They, on the drive, Chauncey just gets into the paint. Lucius Harris steps to it, but he's he's in the circle. And Walks. moving. And moving. <laughs> in that restricted area, you cannot pick up an offensive foul when you are the defender sliding over there. There's uh, some thought of expanding that circle to make it a little, from about three feet from the tip of the rim, back of the rim, to maybe five feet. Would that be good, do you think? I personally think it'd be good because I, I think it's made it'll make people go to the rim more which right now that three-point line is the exact opposite's happening in the game well if you're just tuning in tonight the Nets are going to the rim they are aggressive they look like the team that won 14 consecutive Eastern playoff games until Monday night's embarrassing loss Richard Jefferson hit his third field goal he and Kenyon Martin have 19 of the next 36 here tonight Get out of the fast break, get some easy buckets, make the jump shots all that easier. Phillips doubled, nearly turned it over. Richard Hamilton was there, though, eight to shoot. And the Nets half-court defense has been brilliant thus far tonight. All one-on-one, -on -one. no easy shot. But Phillips nice. makes a tough runner. <laughs> I think Phillips is recognizing right now they need someone to get hot, need someone to get aggressive. And the last couple possessions, he's been the guy. Two man game, Kenyon and Kidd. They swing it to Jefferson with Williams. Kidd misses three outside shots, make it 0 for 4. They bang the gong for a Wallace rebound, Ben Spiff. Rasheed Wallace thought about three. Took Chauncey Phillips for two.
the coaching staff for Detroit thinks Phillips is the key to their basketball team. The last three possessions, down a lot of points, he has shown up and given them a good spark to get him back into this basketball game. Bad ankle in the playoffs last year, healthy this year. The former number three overall pick of the Celtics has scored the last seven points, taking a double-digit deficit down to six. Welcome back to the 2004 NBA Playoffs on ESPN. Coming up in moments on the Toyota Halftime Show, Greg Anthony and Stephen A. Smith will join me, and we will have a preview of this weekend's big games. Plus, you'll give your thoughts on this one, and let's get a quick synopsis right now of, of what's going on in this game. Well, New Jersey's playing the great defense, but they're also controlling the backboard. That leads to opportunities in transition where they're the best in the league, and when you're a confident basketball team from getting those finishes, it helps you in the half-court offense they're as well. They're pushing the ball up the court. Jason Kidd is being the general that he is, and... Detroit is not hustling back the way they need to. They need to get their acts together. All right, the Nets on a roll right now, literally. They're running. Let's go back to Mike. Okay, Craig, uh, Kevin, Greg, and Stephen A. When you try to say them all at once, it comes out Craig. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys at halftime. We're here at the Palace of Auburn Hills for game two of this best of seven Eastern Conference semifinal. They met in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, a four-game New Jersey sweep. Remember, Detroit had the home court in that series and lost the first two games by a couple each. Jason Kidd hit the big shot to win game one last year. He hasn't hit a shot tonight. So, guys, Chauncey Billups, the last seven points for Detroit, very big in getting the Pistons back in contact range before the end of the half. Well, I think it was a great spurt. Three possessions in a row. He's made three baskets. And a great, you know, he's been controlled by Larry Brown. Oh, oh did Martin get that? On the way back down, he tipped in the alley-oop. The set play out of the timeout. That might be the dunk of the night. <laughs> Man. Hey, what a pogo stick. That was amazing. And the Nets have been scraping the sky here in game two. But he's doing what he's needed to do. He has 12 points so far, and they needed that from him. Again, good half-court defense, five to shoot. They get it out of the hands of Phillips. So Ben Wallace, who was fouled by Jason Collins. And this is someone who could just go get it. There's not many. I mean, look how high that thing is. That's almost top of the square. And from the floor cam, you can... Well, I don't know what you can see. <laughs> you could see that he wa waved those legs to keep himself airborne for just another half second to come on down. They left Rasheed Wallace free. Rimmed it out. Hit the board. Look at all the blue shirts. It's like a wave from left to right. Jason Kidd for three. So the Nets, who had only 39 points in the first three quarters of game one, have 41 here in the first 22 minutes tonight. It's the first time New Jersey's made a three-pointer, and I think it's a big part of Jason Kidd's confidence right now. He's not shooting the ball well. That might get him going a little bit. First three-point hit of the night for the Nets. Tayshaun Prince has been held scoreless. He's 0 of 4 from the field. Jefferson on the run. Rasheed Wallace, a great block. That is simply an incredible pass. I mean, that really is. I mean, just to be able to thread the needle like that in a great defensive play, the length of Rasheed Wallace getting over there and blocking that shot. But it's, it's so much fun watching this guy in the open court because he just, you know, much like Joe Montana playing QB, he just sees things before they happen. Turned it over there. Here's Michelle. This week. He admit, admits that he's been eating poorly, drinking coffee after midnight. He even said, you don't get this ugly without missing a lot of sleep. But Jason Kidd told me he admires Frank's work ethic. He said his coach is really, really intense, but he's not one to panic, and that's what makes the difference, Mike. Yeah, Michelle, it's a fine line. When the guy goes back, and George, you know, you, you've lived the playoffs for over a decade, 15 years of your life. When you lose a game, you do everything you can as a coach. Sometimes it's the extreme of not going home. Sometimes it's the other extreme to get your guys back on track. I think he's got to show that he's not desperate. And I think, you know, you, you have habits where you stay up all night, you watch film, and you watch it again, and then you watch it again. But I think he's done a good job of displaying to his team. He believes in this team. I mean, you can't come out and show any fear. You got, you've come so far as a coach, and you've got to lead this team in confidence and direction and making decisions, and you cannot show desperation. And sometimes coaches get show desperation, but I don't think that's happened this far. He's shown a good discipline, a commitment, and he believes in his basketball team. 
The 30-year-old, 33-year-old Frank, who is, as Billups takes the three and missed it. Nice rebound. Ben Wallace to Hamilton. The Pistons cannot hit tonight. And Richards finally knocks that one down. You have to say Lawrence Frank at 33 is the youngest head coach in the four major professional sports. Got the job after Byron Scott was let go the end of January. Former Indiana basketball manager. Kenyon Martin's had a great half. One on one on Wallace. He traveled. But we maybe have a foul first called by Danny Crawford. We do. A foul before and a technical foul has been called on Rasheed Wallace. Wallace walked away from Danny Crawford, was upset with the call, but Joe DeRosa called a tease on Rasheed. Here's the call, foul before the travel. Baseline official Davy Jones had the travel, Danny Crawford had the foul on the outside, and now three Pistons in conversation with Joe DeRosa as to why he called the technical that Jason Kidd does not convert. Well, Rasheed walked away, but it was still animated, and it was called by a referee observing him. He was not going after Danny. He walked away. I'm not sure. I think sometimes we, because of Rasheed's oh, Did they call history. a second one on him? Wait, who did they call the second one on here? Larry Brown or Rasheed Wallace? Called on Larry Brown. All right, so it's a technical on the Pistons head coach. And I like Larry. that technical. That, that first technical stinks, because Rasheed Wallace is walking away. If he wants to be animated and upset, but he's not right in your face, and if anybody should have called it, it should have been Danny Crawford. But I think what Larry's trying to do right now is bring some anger into the yep. game, bring some some emotion into the game to get his team fired up and more aggressive. Of course, all the attention on Rasheed Wallace a few years ago when he picked up the 41 technical fouls in Portland really became a problem child in many eyes, and people forgot to see as Jason Kidd hits the shot to put the Nets up 12. They no longer could see the all-star ability in Rasheed Wallace. And it's a tag that, uh, along with other things off the court in Portland, eventually forced Wallace to be traded, and he came here to Detroit. Largest lead of the night for the Nets. It's a dozen with a minute left, and Corliss Williamson hits the jump. Ten-point game. Well, right now, you got Jason Kidd, Kenyon Martin, and Jefferson playing really well. Detroit's got to find who they're gonna, who's going to pick up their effort. Jason Collins not in foul trouble here tonight as he was in game one. Rodney Rogers rotates it to Kittles with five on the clock. Missed it, but Collins gets the ball. Nets have been great on the offensive glass, and Jason Collins is fouled. As mentioned, a busy playoff weekend. Let's set it for you. Tomorrow, a doubleheader on ESPN. Kia NBA shootout at 6 Eastern. Heat Pacers game two. Sacramento and Minnesota for game two. Sunday on ABC, we have GMC NBA hang time at three. Spurs Lakers must win for LA game three. And then on TNT, this series will continue Sunday night at 8 Eastern at the Continental Airlines Arena. One more coming for Collins. Jefferson's on the bench because of his two fouls, but he has nine. Kenyon Martin, 12. And the Nets, plus six on the glass. They were minus 19 in game one. Missed them both, and a foul on New Jersey. All right, Rev, all right. The biggest flip-flop from game one to game two is the Jefferson uh, Prince matchup. Yes. You know, Jefferson in game one, one for 12. as a bad night. Tonight, Tashawn has zero. And Travel. Jefferson has nine. Travel called on Detroit. Uh, now New Jersey's going to have a chance for a two for one. They have about five, six seconds to be able to get the shot off and then get the last shot of the game, or last shot of the half, I should say. See if they go for the quick hit. Rodney Rogers thought about the three. It get out to Kidd. Nice slip pass to Rogers. Jason Collins on the glass. That is 10 offensive rebounds for the Nets. They had seven in all of game one. What they're doing is making the, new, the Detroit defense move side to side. Then you're in a scramble situation, and you don't know who you're responsible for on the blockout. One on one, Phillips and Kidd. Phillips turns and shoots. No travel call, and that brings the first half to an end. Rasheed Wallace has to be very careful over there. That doesn't pick up 
a uh, second technical foul, and he does get away unscathed. Here's Michelle with Richard Jefferson. Well, you have to make adjustments, and, and, and I've learned in the playoffs, a team that loses first has the advantage because you're able to go in and make adjustments, and that's something that we really focused on this week in practice. What was the biggest adjustment, and what's made the difference in, in your ability to score inside? Well, you know, you're used to their defense. You understand their shot blockers. You adjust to that, and you keep being aggressive. They're going to block some shots. They're going to alter some shots, but that shouldn't deter you from going to the basket. And defensively, why have you guys been better? Well, we felt that we played a good defensive game last game. We only scored 78 points, and we felt that we could have played better, so, you know, we still focus on our defense and that's the way we play richard thanks thank you back to you guys all right michelle thank you the toyota halftime report coming up with kevin greg and Stephen a look ahead to the weekend and two more coaches fired in the nba and believe me we'll be watching you guys because william hung is the halftime entertainment here enough already how about the nets 56 points in game one 46 points and a half of game two they look like the old nets up a dozen in detroit at the half Welcome to the Toyota Halftime Show. Big first half for the New Jersey Nets and Jason Kidd. He has six points, but more importantly, his team has 10 fast break points, and the Nets bounce, and they lead 46 to 34. Welcome to Times Square, and we take a look at our McDonald's brackets, NBA brackets, and uh, you look at the playoffs, we're down to what I like to call the Elite Eight. The Pacers and Heat, they'll be in action coming up. And, uh, meanwhile, the Pistons and Nets, the game we're watching. We take a peek at the coaches who were fired on Friday. A pair of coaches fired. Tim Floyd let go down in New Orleans. After one season, Terry Stotts, the longest tenured coach in the East, let go by Atlanta after uh, two years with the Hawks. Meanwhile, back to basketball. And let's talk about the games that have already gone on. And we start with the uh, Kings and Timberwolves. And in game one, Mike Bibby was on. He scored 33 points. KG struggled. He was 6 of 21 from the field. And uh, the Kings steal game one. Meanwhile, Heat and Pacers. And basically, it was all Pacers. After an 11-day layoff, no problems. Ron Artest, 25 points. His team has won 10 straight over the Heat. We take a peek at what's coming up tomorrow. Saturday, a great day for basketball on ESPN. It starts with Kia NBA shoot around at 6 Eastern then. It's game two between the Heat and Pacers. Can Miami climb back into this series? That's at 7 Eastern. It's followed by our nightcap. The Kings and Timberwolves at 9.30 Eastern. Game two, and can KG get back on track? Big news, and I think we want to uh, take a second to say congratulations to Pacers coach Rick Carlisle. He uh, missed practice today because his wife gave birth to a baby girl, so I think I want to send congrats out there, and I'm sure he'll be back at practice. Welcome to the Toyota Halftime Show alongside Greg Anthony and Stephen A. Smith. I'm Kevin Frazier, and guys, Miami and Indiana, let's start with that, and uh, maybe you have the luck of childbirth because, you know, usually <laughs> after after having a child, most guys do well. Is Rick Carlisle's team going to continue to roll? Yeah, I think they will. Again, I like Miami. They, they've been really a Cinderella story all season. They're playing good basketball but Indiana is really on a mission and, and what they do well Miami doesn't handle the ability to score in the paint they got three guys who scored their back to the basket they are relentless they're athletic and they get after it on the defensive end can't say enough about the Miami Heat they've had an outstanding year Stan Van Gundy was one of the top coach of the year candidates so everybody knows that everybody knows about the talent the speed that they have but they lack size and the one formidable foe on the Indiana Pacers happens to be their biggest boy in the house Jermaine O'Neal I'm talking talent-wise. He's just got the skills. They have yeah. no answer for him. You know, but it's not just the talent, though. you, you got to be able to score at your back to the basket. And, and Miami can't score in the paint other than off of penetration. And you need to be able to get those pressure releases where you can throw it to a guy and get an easy bucket. And let's not forget, J.L. just 5 of 17 in that game, so he didn't play particularly well, and that doesn't bode well for the Heat. Meanwhile, our second game, the uh, Timberwolves and Kings. And you know what? How about the Kings looking to win their fourth straight playoff game in a single season for the first time since 1951 when they are at Rochester? the Royals and Latrell Sprewell another guy who had an awful game one everybody points to KG but Spree also struggled he needs to get his game and world back together what happens in game two well I think they have to make the adjustments in speaking of the Minnesota Timberwolves you're gonna have to have a bigger game from Latrell Sprewell you expect one from Kevin Garnett but it'll be interesting to see the adjustments that Flip Saunders make now that you've seen what Rick Adelman has done in terms of coming out with the tricked up defense to really confuse the Minnesota T-Wolves if you're Sprewell you've got to deal with Paige who suddenly has found some kind of defensive prowess in these playoffs <laughs> along with Doug Christie. You've got formidable defensive players right
right there, but I think it's just a rhythm thing with Spree. Well, I was at that game. He just missed a few open shots, shots that he normally makes. He missed. If Cassell is off in game two, he might be the guy that steps up. It's not, it's happened before with these guys. You know, guys, going on right now in Detroit, one of those situations where you look at it and you say, what in the world? How was this guy getting the hookup? And I'm talking about the halftime entertainment in Detroit. We'll give you a little, little taste of William Hung, who is, um... She bangs. <laughs> who is riding the wave of his popularity <laughs> to millions of dollars. Yeah, baby. Talk to me. Tell me your sign. You're switching sides like a Gemini. This halftime show is presented by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Welcome back to the Toyota Halftime Show. Ah, uh, picture-perfect night in uh, Times Square. You know what? If William Hung has an album, you should, Stephen, shouldn't you? Absolutely. After listening to that garbage, I could be a, I could become a billionaire. <laughs> I don't know if you can become a billionaire. Hey, what about what's wrong with being a millionaire? I could be Bobby Brown. <laughs> don't don't bring Bobby in. I never said I would leave that alone. Hey, mm -hmm. let's recap the Lakers and Spurs series. And in Game One, Lakers were out of sync. They had 21 turnovers. And Duncan and Parker combined for 50 points. Tony was crazy. We thought he was good in game one. He was even better in game two. Sensational. I mean, just unstoppable. That move was ridiculous. 30 points for Parker. This team led by as many as 19 points. Sunday on ABC, the Lakers will be on their Sunday whites. Can they bounce back? The day starts with GMC. NBA hang time at 3 Eastern. And the Spurs Lakers, San Antonio leads that series two games and on 3.30 Eastern for the basketball game. I noticed you didn't tell anybody I was going to be at that game. I detect a bit of jealousy from you, Mr. Frazier. Well, I mean, we well, may not get... Some of us we, have to work for a Right. Now. We have really? to work. I'm going to work, too. Like I said, some of us have, have to, to work for a living. Like I said, I'm going to work, too. Lakers got any chance? Game three, yes. They better win the next two or the series is over in five games. That, that's very astute. That's Wasn't very that what, I mean, that's, well, they, that, that is, is the kind of insight. That is what we call rocket Ed. science. Thank you. Obviously, they need to win the game. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, Steve, for well, that insight. Well, he asked the question. Thank you for that insight. Anyway, <laughs> great first half so far from the New Jersey Nets. They're scoring points. They're on the run. Sick catch and bucket by Kenyon Martin. Mike and crew are up next. This halftime show is presented by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. All set for the second half of Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals. The Nets lead the Pistons by 12 here at the Palace of Auburn Hills in America's Motor City. Let's check the Cadillac game track thus far and it's been a much different story here in game two. Kenyon Martin attacking the rim. 12 points, five rebounds for the All-Star. Richard Jefferson finishing breaks after one of 12 from the field in game one. Nine points, three and seven here. Without Chauncey Billups, the Pistons would be in a gigantic hole. A dozen points and six assists for the starting point guard. As we look at the uh, Nike first half stats George Carl and Tom Silver much better performance from the Nets offensively and you guys put the Y to these numbers well the one thing you don't see there is New Jersey at 42 field goal attempts and I thought it was important to get up 80 80 48 percent I don't think that's going to hold they're not going to shoot 48 percent for a game but if you can keep getting those field goal attempts up in the 80s that's more their style of game before George tells you his thoughts on the second half, let's see what Larry Brown was thinking at halftime. Here's the show. Well, first Larry Brown came out of the locker room, stopped to kiss his kids before coming back on the court, then stopped to talk to me. He told me Jason Kidd completely controlled this game, and he said that Detroit, uh, New Jersey rather, was able to get out and run for a few reasons. Hustle plays, better rebounding, and Detroit's turnovers. Brown told me they will not necessarily change up their defense on Kidd, but he wants to see his team take better shots and match New Jersey's energy, which he said, we haven't done that tonight. Michelle Kidd could be on his way to a triple-double. Six points, six boards, eight assists in that first half. And George, what do you look for here in half two? I think, can New Jersey sustain, I think, two basic simple philosophies. Take the ball to the basket and go to the boards. That's basically they, their biggest change is be aggressive off at the offensive end of the court by penetrating the ball, see what happens. Don't be afraid of their big guys and pound the boards behind the penetration. The Nets turn it over here to start the third quarter. The 10 starters who began the game start quarter number three of this game two. Remember, game three comes up Sunday. 
at the Continental Airlines Arena in New Jersey, game four on Tuesday. Richard Hamilton, who was hot in the first quarter with eight points, leads the uh, Pistons along with Phillips. Each has a dozen. I think Detroit also has to find a way to get Prince and Rashid involved inside. You know, in last game, they dominated 32 to 16, I believe it was, points in the paint. That's a plus 16. This game, they're minus 10. Kenyon Martin goes right at Rasheed Wallace. Jason Collins snuck in under Ben Wallace. Another offensive rebound for the Nets. A lot of their layups. They gave up eight layups so far in this game, which is way too many for the Detroit Pistons. And that gives New Jersey confidence when they get the fast break layup, the lob dunk. Uh, the offensive rebound tip and all those things give, give it more energy to New Jersey. Phillips got past kid, met by Kenyon Martin, and fouled by the next fourth year power forward. First overall pick of the 2000 draft, Kenyon Martin. It was interesting watching that last play. I was watching uh, Rip Hamilton try to run the baseline. And just something that you wouldn't necessarily notice, but in watching what Collins did. He just stepped in his way to get in his way to get the defender time to catch up to Hamilton and it kind of throws off the timing of the play. So, you know, it's just a little thing, but if Hamilton's able to run free, catch it in rhythm and shoot it, obviously much better, but Collins get in his way, make him adjust a little bit. Well, right now, the Detroit front line hasn't shown up offensively. I mean, Wallace has been, Ben Wallace and Rasheed Wallace giving a little defense, but five points from those three guys in the first half. It's not going to get it done. Two of 13 from the field from those three starters. Rashid on an island with Kenyon Martin. Ben Wallace came down to help. Kenyon traveled. Second time has been called for steps tonight. And that was the point of emphasis as Larry Brown was walking off the court. He was really confronting Danny Crawford that he feels there's a lot of step calls happening in this game so far. Ten-point New Jersey lead a couple minutes in. Here's Tayshaun Prince, ice cold thus far here tonight after a great game one. Ben Wallace not shy about shooting these days, but he traveled. Last year, when Rick Carlisle was the head coach of a 50-win Detroit team, Ben was discouraged from shooting and being a part of half-court offense. Larry Brown has encouraged him, and as a matter of fact, the Pistons' offense runs better when Ben gets touches inside and takes a look at the basket. I think the biggest difference between Rick Carlisle's Detroit Pistons and Larry's De Detroit Pistons is the freedom offensively. Jason Kidd spins baseline, re-extends the lead to a dozen. He made a three earlier in early in the second quarter, and it seems like he's gotten more confidence in his shots now that Jason made that one three. Especially after missing the first three and the third one badly. Rasheed Wallace couldn't get the kid. Chauncey Billups does it alone. And lost control of it. Kittles over the outstretched Prince. Nice rebound and pass to Jefferson. Ben Wallace the block. Kicks the ball. Defensively, defensively, it looks like these two teams switch uniforms. Because New Jersey's defense is looking like Detroit's defense in the first game. Everything's challenged. Nothing is easy. You gotta pay a price when you go inside. High low with Rasheed Wallace to Ben, who lost it, but got fouled. Well, do you think it had to do with the Nets having a week off after the next series? No, I just think the Nets are a good team, and they were going to play two bad games in a row. But anytime you go out there, regardless of what sport you're playing, and you get embarrassed, you have three days at Festers. And you hear about it, and you read about it, and you know you're a good team, but you want to get back out there and prove that you were, you know, two-time Eastern Conference champ. You're going to show them how you got there. Ben Wallace, the jumper. Would not have shot that last year. Well, he might have shot it, yeah. but he wouldn't have looked at the bench after he shot it. Exactly. <laughs> New Jersey, plus 10. Next try, they just do what you're supposed to do in the first two games as the road to get one. Hit. Two Pistons on the board, and Chauncey Billups comes away with it. No easy baskets for Detroit. Rasheed Wallace. Ridden down a three. Hamilton's foot was on the line, so he couldn't save it. It's a Detroit team that was sixth best in the NBA, 31 and 10. Here at home. The Nets were under 500 on the road at 19 and 22 during the regular season. Nets struggling here in the half court to start this second half. 
three turnovers. Ben Wallace for back-to-back -back field goals. And anytime Ben just breathes in this building, the people get into it, and a timeout is called by Lawrence Frank in the net. They gave him the double bomb for that bucket. <laughs> Four Pistons out of the gate here in the third. The Nets lead is eight. ESPN's presentation of the NBA playoffs brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Cadillac, bold vehicles, define convention. Nike basketball. And Universal Pictures, The Chronicles of Riddick. On June 11th, all the power in the universe can change destiny. One of the proud sports byproducts of uh, sports loving city, the Motor City, the hitman Thomas Hearns on hand. The Pistons trail the Nets by eight here in game two. Remember on ABC, on Sunday, it is game three of the best of seven Spurs and Lakers. GMC NBA hang time from Times Square at 3 Eastern. Game tips just after 3.30. Uh, Trey Manifique would not begin to describe Tony Parker. 50 points, 14 assists in the first two games. He's been good. He's been, He's been real good. good. <laughs> Al Michaels, Doc Rivers, and Michelle Tafoya will have that. And while we have a second, guys, tip of the cap and congratulations to our colleague Michelle, who will do a great job yes. on Monday Night Football this coming fall. Can she get tickets for games? Inside, the foul is called on Tayshawn Prince. Well, it, it depends, George. If you've been nice to Michelle this year, you'll find out in the fall. I think there's a Green Bay Packer game. I'm not, I'm not sure, George. I, you gave pens to those guys tonight. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. End of season game. Congratulations, MT. We're all proud of you, pal. I appreciate it, you guys. Kenny Martin comes to the line. College Player of the Year when he was at Cincinnati. Remember during championship week that year he broke his leg. Yep. Cincinnati went from a sure one seed to a two seed. They were knocked down in the second round. And some people were concerned if Martin would still be the same as the number one overall pick. But boy, in his uh, fourth year, he's blossomed. A career best this year, 17 points, nine and a half rebounds per game. One of two there, Prince the rebound. Well, let's see if they can find a way to get Tayshaun Prince involved offensively. He has done nothing. Him and Walls combined, I believe, two for 13. Mm -hmm. They need to find a way to get those guys involved down on the block. Oh, had him. Brought around high low. Ben Wallace is short, and a foul is called on the Nets as Rasheed Wallace is battling four positions. Yeah, that one should be automatic. When they swing it from the wing to the top of the key, and you got your man fronted down on the low block, all he has to do is turn and seal. You throw it up at the rim. He goes and gets it done. Three fouls on Jason Collins. Three on the Nets in the quarter. Hamilton missed. Collins gets the rebound. Not a ton of second chance opportunities for the Pistons in this game. Part of the work, Collins. Nine rebounds. Invisible with early foul trouble in game one. He'll move on Ben Wallace. He knocks it away. Phillips took it away. Here come the Pistons. Wallace runs to the right. And there he is. Near steal in the backcourt, it is stolen by Wallace to Richard Hamilton inside. Got trapped in the air, Phillips lost it. Wallace tried to give the foul in the backcourt. It's four on three nets. It's Kittles, it's three. How about the hustle of Ben Wallace? Steal, uh, yep. steal, basket, try to draw the foul, comes back on this end and gets the rebound. Plays intensely at every position. Hamilton, no. Good job by Jefferson to get a body on Rasheed Wallace. But two good looks by Hamilton. He usually buries those. Rasheed Wallace blocks Jason Kidd, and the foul is called on New Jersey. Is that Jason Collins? It is. It's his fourth. They score. Here's a steal by his quick hands, deflections. He leads his team in deflections. Here he comes and finishes up. His third straight field goal. Ben Wallace has given him an offense and a defensive dimension. So Jason Collins to the bench with four, and this could be an important stretch here, guys. This was the time when the uh, Pistons took the better of play in game one, but Aaron Williams had a good first half here tonight for New Jersey. The 10th year man out of Xavier. 
but throws the paint. Little zone, this New Jersey's kind of a change up a little bit. They're going to a little 2-3 zone. Wallace tried the handoff to Hamilton. It's out off the net. Seven to shoot. Well, they switched up on that one, and I, I thought the Pistons did a poor job of recognizing that Jason Kidd was guarding Tayshawn Prince. If that's the case, you go right to the block when you got a little guy on you and dump him the ball, easy shot, or make him double team. Prince squeezes it in to Billups. Five-point game. It was 46-34 at the half. 12-5 Pistons in the third and 8-1 run here. Williams contested by Ben Wallace. Offensive foul call. has changed this game in the last few minutes. He's everywhere. He's bouncing around, jumping around, making shots. Hamilton is trying to shake three. Billups does. And tees up Rasheed Wallace. Couple of inches, size advantage on Martin. Point game. Five minutes. Third quarter. Pistons have extended their defense right in the mug of the nets. Jefferson left free. Rebound Rasheed Wallace. A three would blow the roof off the palace. Hamilton foul. This is a great spot for Rasheed Wallace. I've always thought he was a tremendous low block player. And just so long. Once he extends and unfolds, you can't get to that shot and affect it. Right now, the difference between New Jersey in the first half and the second half is in the first half, they're able to get offensive rebounds. They're able to get out on the break. Therefore, it made their half court offense run smoother. Right now, no easy bucket. One more free throw for Hamilton, 87% shooter. You've seen him over the years. Watch the one dribble to the right as he gets set. Started this in high school. Just a reminder to get his legs, that one right there, get his legs into this free throw. He changed himself as a free throw shooter, became much better. Bags two there. The Nets have led by as many as 12. The lead is one. Nets two of ten in this quarter. Five turnovers. Nice pass to the cutting Kittles. Lindsey Hunter in the game. A technical foul has been called. This is not happening. Technical foul on Lawrence Frank. Back on the New Jersey bench. This is a technical foul assessed to Lawrence Frank. It was called by Danny Crawford, who was running right there with Lawrence Frank. Frank called for a technical in quarter four of game one. And now Hamilton has a chance to tie the game. Attendance, an average of 21,300. It gets as loud as here, in here, as it does in Arco in Sacramento. Great building. Ben Wallace wants it, takes it. Rasheed fighting to keep it alive. Good, strong board from Kenyon Martin. Jefferson cuts and is fouled. All over 22 touchdowns. Well, the question is, and this is a game question and a series question. Can they, if they don't get out in the fast break, can they score in the half court consistently enough to win a game or a series? Now, they did it in the first half, shooting 48%. Some of that was in the fast break. But can you put it together for 48 minutes? And can you do it often enough to win four games in a series? That will be the question. And that's the question Mark I would have. And just looking at the team, you would have to say, no, I don't think they can do it for a game, let alone four games. Well, I think right now, New Jersey's offense has hit, hit a cold spell, and they haven't scored in five minutes. 
And they're missing free throws. It's a home court crowd helping the home team come alive. And it's going to be interesting how they're going to fi fight the flood of momentum. It's on Detroit's side right now. Two points in the last six minutes. Nets are 7 of 14 from the line tonight. They're an average free throw shooting team, 75%. That's 13th in this 29 team lead. Tayshaw, fake the three, got inside. Rasheed Wallace tipped it, and Prince tipped it. But the Nets, Williams comes away with a board, turned it over. Hamilton draws the free throw. Here's Detroit just playing above the rim, tipping, playing ping pong with it, but they can't get it in. Aaron Williams doesn't see Hamilton sneak and steal it and gets the foul. Hamilton at the line for two. George, you mentioned playing ping pong with it. Tayshawn Prince, Rasheed Wallace, Ben Wallace, each has an arm like a length span. If you go middle finger to middle finger across their back, over seven feet of wingspan. They can do that. They can play volleyball up top over the smaller nets inside. It's always frustrating, too, is the, the home team, when you're on a run and you want to get the crowd going into it, and if Hamilton makes his free throw, you're going to hear some noise. But it's always better to take the lead on a field goal than a free throw. Because on a field goal, the crowd just goes berserk, and they really get into it. Or a three-point shot. Yes, exactly. Might see the Pistons take a timeout when they get the ball back. Foul here by Darvin Ham, who came in the game for a couple of minutes of defense. Interesting, Darvin Ham is the 11th man on this roster, but George, you had him in Milwaukee and had to start him a game seven in the Eastern Conference Finals, right? Darvin's an energy player, he's a hustle player, and a very good defensive player, and he's a winner. He knows how to help a team win games. You can't play in big minutes, but you can play him. Jefferson challenged by Ben Wallace. The center gets a rebound 23 feet away. And here the Pistons will take that timeout I talked about. Larry right now feels his team's a little emotionally fatigued. A lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of intensity. He's going to rest them now. He's got some guys sitting on the bench. He'll get them back in early in the beginning of the fourth quarter. But it's a great comeback with the crowd going crazy. The NBA playoffs on ESPN continues in a moment. Tonight on SportsCenter, how Tony Parker's taken the glove off. How Eli settled in as a backup on day one. A familiar face is back on top. And the real difference between Barry and Junior. After the game. The hustle and energy of all-star Ben Wallace helping the Pistons get back in it. Once down, 12, they're up one, and here's Michelle again. Yeah, Ben Wallace, a difference maker, Mike. He wasn't drafted out of Virginia Union in 1996, but a college teammate of him, Maurice Green, said, hey, you'll get on a roster if you distinguish yourself as a guy who excels at the things no one else really focuses on, like defending, rebounding, and blocking shots. So Wallace and Green began to work on those things in the gym every Every single day and now Wallace says I pride myself on going out and outworking anybody you put on me night in and night out he's done that tonight Mike yeah, Virginia Union turns out those kind of guys Charles Oakley of course in the same school similar heart energy and you see that the uh, throw they say fear the throw around here Ben Wallace's wife decides if it's throw or if it's cornrows and it is cornrows for the quaff tonight for the Pistons All-Star. There he is. Wow. <laughs> I don't think you want Detroit him shooting that in the fourth quarter. <laughs> but people used to watch the Pistons and curl into a fetal position, foul at mid as they double hit. When Ben would take a shot, people just get into that fetal position, just yeah. reach the rim. And you can see he has gained confidence with his offensive ability this year. Well, the three shots he's hit, he's all hit from right there. And I think he get a rhythm shooting from the same spot on the floor, and he has that rhythm. New Jersey has no rhythm right now. It took him about nine minutes to go from 48% shooting to 40, and Kenyon Martin needs to get back in the flow. Offensive foul, Martin. He took the left hand, trying to discard Corliss Williamson, and Martin hits up the personal. 
His third. You know, he plays with such ferocity, sometimes it works against him. Because he just wants to be so aggressive and get to the rim, and he's a physical player, and sometimes whatever is in his way, he's going to go right through. Nets have to be careful. Collins has four. He's on the bench. Martin has three. There are two bigs, interior presence guys. Would be getting in foul trouble back into the third. The Ben Wallace offensive clinic short circuited. Throws it up. I mean, have you seen a game flip this fast in a long time? From minus 12 to plus five. Well, it happens when the Nets have rolled a six in the first 10 minutes of the third quarter. Seven turnovers. They've missed their last 10 shots. Two of 12 from the field in the third. Hard foul on Williams in the act. It'll be two shots. It's on Ben Wallace. Two for Ben. In the first half, Larry Brown played units. His first unit started the game, and about one, two minutes left go in the first quarter, he put his second unit in. This half, he's mixing it. He's play, he took Chauncey out for, or first, brought him back in. He's mixing his first unit with his second unit. He's probably going to keep James on the bench and shorten his rotation. He wants more quality offensive players on the court more often. Nets have been awful at the line tonight, 8 of 16. Pistons are 11 of 12. Offensive foul on Williamson. Dangerous for Martin to try to draw on there. But well done by Kenyon. Martin set a pick on Hunter there at midcourt, giving kids some room to roam. Nice pass by Lucius Harris to Jefferson, and a foul is called underneath. Tom mentioned the uh, poor quarter from the Nets, looking more like their output in all four quarters of the first game. Seven here in the third. Yeah. <laughs> well, you talked about their free throw shooting, Mike. That, that's going to be something if they want to win this game. From here on out, you're going to have to make your free throws. Fourth quarter, you're going to have to make your free throws. You can't shoot 50% from the line and expect to win a playoff game on the road. Jefferson bags both there. Back to two. Another low-scoring Pistons Nets game. And if you are unemotionally attached or not in the building, you say, oh, God, somebody scrape 80. But when you watch possession by possession, it is ability, not offensive inability. Williamson. Oh. by Lindsey Hunter is chased down by Kidd. Jefferson a three. Final minute of the third. Jefferson tries for the steal. Prince looking for points. Found Williamson instead. Jump off. Corliss very active in this couple of minutes stretch. Well, when he's in the game, he's in the game to score. And that's what he's in the game to do. Not much defense, not a lot of rebounding anymore. But you're not going to get the calls in this game. They are going to let you play. They're going to let these guys be somewhat physical. And you have to make sure you take it up strong and not look for fouls. If they give it to you, it's a bonus. But don't expect it. Ben Wallace, empty tank at the back end of the third. Larry Brown will rest him through the end of quarter timeout. Rasheed Wallace comes in. In his stead, the Nets have gone nine minutes without a field goal. Win the tip there. Williams set a screen for Jefferson. He split. Travel. If it didn't travel, Rasheed was there for the slot. Try to get Hamilton in quickly for offense. They could not. Phillips, foul.
Oh, look at the bright spot for the Nets. They had 39 going into the fourth quarter last game. They're plus 16 there. <laughs> but they're not going to get double digits in this quarter. They missed the last 11 shots and have eight turnovers. The game is flip flopped in the, in the first half. Detroit had turnovers, missed a lot of easy shots. I think it's a great building. Uh, the building has helped this, this home team find his, their rhythm offensively. One more for Billups. There's one thing when you look at game one compared to tonight. Offensively for Chauncey Billups, much better. 11 more points. He has struggled in the fourth quarter of these playoffs. Two of 16 shooting from the field in the final 12 minutes. Chauncey, who earned a reputation last year as a big closer in the fourth, will watch him in the final 12. Kid wanted the foul. Joe DeRosa says, play on with a three-second difference. Game and shot clock. Darvin Ham, good defender on Jefferson. Rasheed Wallace was there on the spin. Jefferson, good challenge to Mason. 3.8, still time to get a shot. Phillips, Hunter, did not get it off. No shot. And we will go to the fourth quarter. The Pistons were down a dozen. They are up four, outscoring the Nets by 16. Look at that. Three of 14 from the field in the third. Detroit tries to go two up. The two-time Eastern Conference champs try to earn a split in the Motor City. Up we go to the fourth quarter. We've got a good playoff game. The NBA playoffs continue on ESPN. You're watching the day after tomorrow's presentation of ESPN's Play Like There's No Tomorrow. Back for quarter number four at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Detroit leads by four. Great quarter from Ben Wallace. Part of tonight's strike. And skill. And Ben Wallace, what do you expect? You expect rebound. You expect shot blocking. You expect maximum effort. What you don't expect are jumpers in bunches. Not one. Oh, deep. Not two. But there was another one. I know it. Yes, there was. Kills. Eight right. points, five boards, two blocks for Ben. <laughs> what do you see in quarter four, Coach? I think it's a great home court right now. Detroit, you know, won more games than New Jersey, even though New Jersey was seeded two, and they got the home court. And I think the home court helped them come back in the third quarter. They have the momentum. New Jersey's got to find a way to change the momentum. Generally speaking, the fourth quarter of NBA games are the slowest quarters. It's hard to get out in the open court and run, so New Jersey's going to have to find a way to score in the half court. Jason Kidd may be in the post. Jason Kidd on pick and roll. But if they're going to do it, I think Jason Kidd's going to have to going to have to get things going, not only scoring, but assist-wise. Attempt for Wallace's turn. So here's Michelle. Well, guys, in that last time out, Lawrence Frank said, you know, they went on a 27 to 11 run, essentially. Larry, he told us before the game, Larry Brown's teams are known for their runs. Yes. And he told his team that was their quarter. This fourth quarter has to be our quarter. Mike? Good point, Michelle. Lawrence Frank was all over that. And he said uh, earlier in the week, one of the differences was the Pistons had three runs in game one. His team had none. That's an offensive foul on the net. I think that's not Rodney Rogers. Yep. Where was that? That's not a playoff foul. Second on Rogers. Jefferson was making the drive, and that's where all the focus was there for the moment. Richard Hamilton comes back in, brings the Hunter back to the bench. Chauncey Billups, Richard Hamilton, Rasheed Wallace, Darvin Ham getting some key minutes here, and Corliss Williamson, five on the floor for Larry Brown's team. Williamson stepped out, usually doesn't take that, held by Rogers on the outside. Kenny Martin's going to come back in for the next. I think the first five or six minutes here is going to be ultra important for New Jersey. You, you can't afford to let Detroit go on a spurt and get up 10, 11 points because when you're up in problem scoring 16, 17 in any given quarter and you get down 10, you know, that is almost insurmountable. Anything over five is going to be difficult to overcome. <laughs> Well, George, tell me, and we talk about this with the Lakers. Spurs series, if it's 2 0, if the Pistons win. Given that you're going to say, well, the series hasn't started yet because the road team hasn't won a game. 
But do you feel more desperation at 2-0 than, say, at 3-1 later on in the series? Well, the earlier you get down 2-0 or down two games, yep. the more time you have to make it up. But it is a desperation. I mean, seven teams have come back from 2-0, and seven teams have come back from 3-1. It's very obviously, history says it's difficult, period. Very, very difficult. You just don't want to get down 4-2. Thanks, Tom. Rogers, a rainbow three from Rodney Rogers, showing the good range. 33% three-point shooter has been very off in the playoffs from behind the arc. Two of 13 until that one. Hamilton. Oh! E. Wallace split the defense and flushed the putback. We've had some great finishes down at that basket tonight. That was a playoff caliber jam right there. Rogers nice up and under on Williamson. Back to two. So let's have Lucius Harris and Rodney Rogers out there. Jason Collins out of the lineup. It's the best offensive unit the Nets can put in there. Minus Kerry Kittle, who's out for the moment. A clear space for Hamilton. A quick step from the former UConn Husky. Someone's got to step in there. I mean, that was a drive from the three-point line with his yeah. head down. Someone's got to step in and try to take that charge. 19 for Hamilton, 18 for Billups. Defense picked up, 45 feet away by Hamilton. Lucius Harris doing it on his own, and that is not what you want to do against a good defensive team. Williamson trying to clear out space in the office. He's got it there. He's got it there. He knows Pistons. how to use that big body. Pistons by six. Time out. New Jersey. Missed a half dozen field goals in a row. Would not be denied. Getting the put back there. And then Rip Hamilton to the cup. Hamilton and Billups have 37. The Palace Guards defending home court here tonight. Williamson, big points off the bench. A team that was down a dozen is up a half dozen in the fourth. ESPN's presentation of the NBA playoffs brought to you by the day after tomorrow when it's all on the line play like there's no tomorrow Nike basketball Jeep trail rated capability only in a Jeep 4x4 and Miller vote Miller for president of beers good call Kevin Frazier in the studio and just a reminder Sunday a huge game for the Lakers as they Take on the Spurs in game three of that series. San Antonio leads two games tonight. What can the Lakers do with San, An with San Antonio's point guard, Tony Parker? He has been magnificent. Mike, it should be a great one. Thank you, Kevin. We look forward to being in there where you guys are. Great doubleheader tomorrow on ESPN as well. Detroit by six. Nine and a half to go here in the fourth. Detroit equaling its biggest lead of the night here at six. Oh, interesting. We've gone through a little over seven quarters in this series, yep. and New Jersey has one quarter where they scored in the 20s. The rest have been in the teens or 11. So they're going to have to come up with a big quarter, which may be 23. That's a huge quarter in this series. Out of the timeout, they went to Rodney Rogers on the low block. He turned it over. And back come the Pistons with their starting five on the floor. The only change in the next starting five is Rogers instead of Collins in the middle. Hamilton, a rise up jump. The largest lead of the night, it's eight. Haven't seen the Nets get any easy hoops here in the second half. And so many in that 27 point second quarter. Rogers a three. With Wallace flying out at him. Phillips, a good rebounding guard, corrals his third of the night. To go with 11 assists. A oh, Wallace three. Jason Kidd. 
Kept alive by the Nets. Fresh shot clock. Get a three. Third chance here for the Nets. Kenyon Martin goes at Rasheed Wallace. Finds three Pistons, but made it anyway. It's a huge basket for New Jersey. Stops a 9-0 run. Rod Thorne, the CEO of the New Jersey Nets. After 14 years in the league office, Kenyon Martin down. Rasheed Wallace skipped it to Hamilton. Back out to Billups. Sets his feet. And knocks down three more! The Nets have scored 18 points in 17 minutes. A lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Rodney Rogers. Good move to get around Ben Wallace. Well, they're just... I mean, it comes, it comes down to the fact that in the half court, Detroit has more scoring options than New Jersey does. And aside from that last bucket oh. by Kenyon, holy cow. Foul on Kenyon Martin. After he fell, Rasheed Wallace trying to get position. Kenyon hang on to him, pull down Rasheed, and pick up his fourth personal foul. Well, this guy's been battling on the block all night long. And right here, Kenyon Martin's going to try to get low, and he trips over the foot, falls down, just decides to grab Rasheed on the way down. But I tell you what, Kenyon Martin, who had a great first half, all but disappeared into that last bucket. I mean, he has not been involved in the offense, and he needed to have a game, a complete game, from the first quarter to the end of the game, and he did it the first half, but for the first quarter and a half in the second half, they either didn't look for him or he just couldn't get it done. Just two shots this half from the field. Rasheed for another triple! <laughs> Largest Detroit lead. A Baker's dozen. Jefferson travels. The presence of Ben and Rasheed Wallace inside. How good is this building, huh? Bill Ma the Ma match the name. Yep. Bill Bill match the name Detroit Rock City. <laughs> That's right. Bill match it at the Continental Airlines Arena. Hamilton. Another one. Good night. Timeout. New Jersey. It's too late. The timeout's too late. Frazier and Greg Anthony in the studio with our Wendy's Plays of the Night. And early on, it looked like the Nets came out on a mission, Greg. And they did. They set the tone. They were aggressive. They were attacking in the paint. You see here with a great finish by Aaron Williams. But you know what? Things started to change in the second half. And I've said fatigue makes cowards of us all. The Nets just don't have the depth to match up. Nets on a roll. Let's go back. Nets in trouble, excuse me. Let's go back to Mike. Well, Kevin, Rick Mahorn, the old bad boy, has watched uh, and described for the radio audience here in Detroit. I'm sure if it's Rick, he's described how good-looking he is. <laughs> but also, <laughs> the uh, notion that the bad boys are back, the defensive presence of the back-to-back -back championships in 1989 and 1990. Right after this building opened up, of course, Joe Dumars is the architect in the front office. You see Bill Lambier on our air. He coaches the WNBA champion Detroit Shock, who play in this building. I saw Vinny Johnson before the game. Nets can't get it across midcourt. And turn it over. Phillips a three. Rebound Prince. Vinny Johnson said it's a different defense, but it's the mentality that has drawn him and so many other fans of the quote, glory days in these parts back to the Pistons. Tayshawn Prince. Ben Wallace couldn't snare that rebound. And here come the Nets, who've scored only 20 points in this half. 
Well, to make a boxing analogy, this Pistons defense is Tommy Hearns. That Pistons defense was Marvin Hagler. Nice. I like that. Kid thought about the three. Kittles took it and made it as Rasheed Wallace came to the deck. George, when we went to timeout, you said maybe too late to take them for Lawrence Frank. Is there a difference in using your timeouts in the playoffs and the regular season? In the regular season, he was waiting for the five-minute timeout because it was Larry's timeout. In a playoff game, you can't afford to take that chance because you might not get to the end of the game. And it's better to end the momentum and take the chance on what happens at the end of the game than to, than to try to save it. Quick. Lock. Nice run out by Kittles, who's coming and give him a few good possessions on defense. Tayshawn French is 0 of 8 tonight, yet his team leads by a dozen with four and a half to go. Good move. Rasheed Wallace a foul. He slapped him. And uh, tells uh, anybody who will listen that that's a foul. <laughs> New Jersey in game one looked like they had some fatigue in their body language in the and just the way they present themselves and in the second half the same fatigue the way they're holding their bodies right now Jefferson and, and, and Kittles leaning over a little bit further than the Pistons and they're just their whole body language they've been to the finals two years in a row they've gone through a season with a lot of chaos a lot of drama coaching changes Alonzo Mourning uh, you know Jason Kidd I mean there's a lot of and now you have injuries at the end of the season they don't have the body spirit of where they have to what they have to do to be successful it's a long run to win a championship I, I don't know if they want to do it right now and don't forget Kidd Jefferson Martin representing the USA in Team USA Olympic qualifying and down the line they've cut it back to 10 here 422 to go Jason Kidd sneaking up for that midcourt track. Phillips got rid of it before that, but Kidd stayed in the defensive possession and forced the turnover. Danny Crawford said he pointed the wrong way. It is Detroit ball. Now that timeout comes. That's the time that Larry Brown called a timeout immediately because he wants to address their pressure rather than maybe waiting. Tonight on SportsCenter, how Tony Parker's taken the glove off. How Eli settled in as a backup on day one. A familiar face is back on top. And the real difference between Barry and Junior. After the game. Back with our producer Phil Dean, director Mike Schwab here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Detroit leads by 10, and let's visit again with Michelle. Mike, Rasheed Wallace has 15.6 rebounds in this game. Chauncey Billups told me earlier that Rasheed has brought a different element to this Pistons team. He plays with so much emotion. He's brought vocal energy, and he can defend with Ben Wallace. Tayshawn Prince told me it's Rasheed's communication on defense that has made them all communicate better on that end of the floor. Prince said, hey, we knew what we were getting offensively from Rasheed Wallace. My reaction to his defense has been simply wow. George, his presence, to amplify Michelle's point, has taken pressure off Tayshawn Prince and Ben Wallace and has made the other players on the Pistons more comfortable and better. That rarely happens when an all-star talent joins a team. Good block there as the Nets are going to try to get back under 10. Jefferson on the run. Doesn't finish but got fouled by Billups. The greatest compliment you can give to any basketball player is he makes other people better. There's, there's probably less than 10 of them in the NBA today. Five or six and you got two of them on the court here. Jason Kidd, his greatest attribute is he makes, he lifts people up and make some special players because of what he brings to the both ends of the court. Rasheed Wallace has never been known as that, but Larry Brown went out of his way to point that out to me. That here's a guy that image-wise is a bad guy, a troubled guy, a, a problem guy, and he isn't. He loves the game of basketball. He has a passion, and he's come in here and sacrificed who he is and made this team a championship-type team. Doesn't hurt that he's uh, looking for a contract next year, can get max money here. A lot of speculation as to where he will go in the offseason. But at hand at the moment, the Nets have gotten back in this with a couple of good stops on this end, a few hoops and some free throws. It is an eight-point lead for the home team. Three and three-quarters left in the fourth. Well, in the last four minutes, New Jersey's got to find a way to speed the game up a little bit, get some turnovers, get out, and try to get quick shots. Shot clock running down. Phillips had to take it. Rasheed Wallace fouled by Kenyon Martin. That's going to be five 
Ron Martin. ESPN tomorrow. Kia NBA shoot around at 6. Heat Pacers game 2 from Conseco at 7 Eastern. Sacramento, Minnesota, 9.30 Eastern. ABC Sunday. Three games starts at 3. Spurs Lakers from Staples at 3.30. Game 3 of this series on TNT at 8 Eastern. Sunday night as the scene shifts to the house that Bruce built in the swamps of Jersey. Hamilton let kid go by. Circus scoop couldn't finish. Next with a chance here to get it down to six or five. Big possession for New Jersey. And you got to look early in the shot clock. You got to see if you can find something. Jefferson changed his mind. Prince took it away and is fouled by kid. It's a good foul. I think that's a shot that Jefferson should have pulled the trigger on. Yeah, that's a shot that you're in rhythm. You go ahead and take it. It's just eight points isn't that big of a deficit, but in this type of game, it is. It's almost like 12 or 13. You don't have the time to come down, set up your offense, try to run plays. When you're shooting 42%, you're almost going to have to be perfect. That's why you need to speed up the game, get a few more field goal attempts to try to get back in it. It's been great defense in this 8-0 run for the next. Hamilton on the run, tossed it to Wallace. It was on the Hamilton pass, not the shot. So the foul is on New Jersey. But what's happening, and I, this is kind of like I watch football games, this happens in football. The team that has the lead goes in for the prevent defense, mm -hmm. and the team goes down and scores. But right now, Detroit's got the lead, and they're kind of in the prevent offense. They're holding the ball. They've gone away from the rhythm that they had earlier to get the big lead, but they think the clock is more important than, than playing offense, and they prevent themselves from scoring points. 87% shooter in the regular season. Hamilton misses his first tonight. Still, he and Billups with 44, 30 more points than the starting guards for New Jersey. Remember, this is just the second playoff season for Richard Hamilton. Last year's run to the Eastern Conference Finals, his first postseason experience. The lead is nine. Martin on the low block with Rasheed. Got underneath. And Jason Collins and Ben Wallace were there at the tip. Collins put it in. Seven-point game. Two and a half to go. New Jersey demands respect for its defense. They get a chance to show it and prove it here. Three people meet Phillips. Good rebound, Martin, who lost it. Wallace got it back. Phillips tipped it in. Devastating. Plus nine. Two minutes to go. Rasheed Wallace fouls Kenyon Martin. Three on Rashid. Oh, not in the bonus yet. Absolutely destroys you to give up second shots at this point of the game. And there's nothing really you can do about that. Two guys going for it, and it's just bad luck that Detroit happened to get it. The lob for Martin. Couldn't get through the defense. Piston ball. The turnovers by New Jersey has, has killed them. It's, they have no confidence. Their momentum, Detroit scoring. Their turnovers have killed in this half. 15 a game in the regular season. They've turned it over 15 times in this half. 20 in the game. Knockout punch would come with a hoop here. Phillips a three. Good night. Timeout. New Jersey. The Detroit Pistons. 96 seconds away from going up 2-0. Get Reese Davis, John Anderson coming up on Sports Center right after the game, unless it turns into one of those NBA coaching things, in which case there'll be two completely new people here. <laughs> two more gone in the Eastern Conference today. And you know Gary Payton believes he has an idea of how to stop Tony Parker. We'll talk about it when you guys finish, Mike. Thank you, Reese and John. We'll see you soon. Here's Joe Dumars and John Hammond. The brain trust for the Pistons in the uh, foreground of that shot. Scott Perry, the director of player personnel. They watch on in their spot back in the shadows, and they've watched their team in all likelihood go up 2-0. As George alluded to before, only seven times has a team won essentially four of the last five in a series, meaning down 2-0 and come back to win it. So uh, long odds ahead, but the Nets, if they do not come back, will package it 
and say we haven't lost any games at home yet. All we've got to do is win our two at home. Chauncey Billups with the foul. First foul in the last two minutes. Net ball out of bounds. And that's it. Just package it that way and say, hey, we hold serve, and then we've got to get either game five in this building a week from tonight or game seven to move on. Well, I think New Jersey has a chance of winning both games in New Jersey, but I don't think L.A. has a chance of winning two games in L.A. So both no. teams who went to the finals last year, I think they're struggling with the emotional makeup of where they are in the playoffs. Kenyon Martin with the jump hook makes it a 10-point game. He had 11 field goal attempts in the first half. That was his fourth field goal attempt here in the second half. He needs to continue to be involved, and they need to make sure they continue to get him involved. Jason Kidd gives the foul on Tayshawn Prince, a 77% shooter in the season. But struggling tonight, he has not shot a free throw and is 0 of 8 from the field. Knows Ben Wallace is in the game and he is a poor free throw shooter at 49%. Yeah. Prince makes his first free throw. He's now 16 of 19 here in the postseason. And now the game officially over. Double down for 22 at the line. <laughs> the lead a dozen. Final 80 seconds, Kidd's got to take it over the long arm of Prince. Inspector Gadget, as Tom likes to call him, <laughs> snatches one away. <laughs> Kenyon Martin with the foul, and he has fouled out. 19 points, 8 points. Better game, but a tough second half for Martin. Well, the challenge for the New Jersey Nets is going to be figuring out a way to consistently score in the half court. That's where they struggle. The problem is that's their biggest struggle offensively, and that's Detroit's biggest strength, half court defense. If that's the trouble they're going to have in this series. you got to try to figure out a way, whether it's Lucius Harris coming in and getting some big buckets for you. I mean, your best player, Jason Kidd, is not necessarily a half court scorer. He's better in the open court. Richard Jefferson, while better than he was last year in the half court, he's better in the open court. Same with Kenyon Martin. They're built for speed. They're not built for strength in the half court, but if they want to win this series, they're going to have to come up with some way to score consistently in the half court. Hamilton makes two. He and Billups each have 26. Jason Kidd held in check. Two points, three assists, three turnovers here in the second half. Jefferson and one. A sloppy foul there. It should be mentioned, though, that uh, Detroit did score about 60 points in the second half. Yes. Yeah. I don't think they can allow that type of explosion no. in their home court. No. Because they can't score that many points. They scored 57 here in the second. John Anderson, Reese Davis, Sports Center momentarily. Richard Jefferson after the 1 of 12 in game one, 5 of 13 from the field. He is uh, tied for the next high score with 19 points. <laughs> yeah. Ben Wall's running down the court. He's like deking the guy like he's about to catch a pass. <laughs> they look up and try to draw the defenders. Yeah, exactly. Wait a minute, it worked. He took two defenders down. That was nice. Into the front court. <laughs> hey guys, get it all access. Look at the NBA playoffs. Tune into NBA TV. The playoff show destination finals every weeknight on NBA TV. And you saw Larry Brown there on the sideline. He will get his 75th playoff win if his team holds on, tying him with. Chuck Daly, who along with Larry Brown, the only two men to coach both the Detroit Pistons and the New Jersey Nets. Yeah. And the U.S. Olympic team. Wow. Very nice. Nice. <laughs> Good question. The game's over right now. I don't think Jason Kidd will play in the Olympics this summer. Yeah. Who is going to be the point guard for the USA basketball team? To replace him? Who's going to replace him? Who's going to start for him? Will it be Bibby? Will it be Marbury? Baron Davis? Who, who's going to do it? I think it's a big question, question. Big question, an important question. Rebound by Hamilton. While well, we have a second, guys, thanks to our stat man, Marty Aronoff, yes. not just for tonight, but for the entire season. Great, great season job, of work with the best. And, men, it's been a pleasure this year. It's been awesome this year. It's been great. Coach, thank you, bud. Thank Enjoyed you. it. I had a ball. Hope we're with you again next year, but I'd much rather be in your coaches' meetings and you can hold us out of practice. <laughs> Hamilton <laughs> takes it to the cup. The Pistons have scored 59. Darko Milicic is set to check in if time uh, allows.
So Detroit is going to win another playoff game in this postseason by double digits. All six of their playoff wins by 10 or more. The average about 17. They were down 12 at the break and outscored the Nets 61-34 in the second half. 2-0 Detroit heading to New Jersey. and Billups, the Palace Guards, the story tonight, they had 28 apiece. Our final score, Detroit 95, New Jersey 80. Couple of game twos tomorrow, Miami, Indiana, Sacramento, Minnesota on ESPN. Sports Center is next with John Anderson, Reese Davis, and we'll see you during their show. For Tom Tobin, George Carl, Michelle Tafoya, Mike Tirico, thanks for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night from Auburn Hills, and off we go to Sports Center.